Good afternoon, evening actually everyone, um, but I'm saying afternoon because uh, the sun hasn't set in Cape Town yet. And Happy New Year! Hope you started um, the year on a splendid note. And on that note, that's the reason why I figured it's probably best, which we'll, we'll, we, we'll actually be doing um, at least every quarter, is to see what is happening with the market in regards of to the all share index, uh, the commodities as well as currencies, because at least those a lot of the currencies do, or rather the shares do follow, um, have some factors that determine um, direction through either or either the currencies or the commodities. So we will have this is the first quarter one. We'll have one in the second quarter around March, April, and to see if uh, you know what impetus is for the second quarter and if it still stands as anticipated. Okay. So, our first quarter uh, market outlook, we're going to be looking at the All Share Index, um, USD ZAR, the RAND, um, Platinum Commodity, Gold Commodity, and last Brent Crude Oil. Okay. Right, so let's start with the All Share Index now. Okay, so, as you, you know, we've looked at the All Share Index numerously over the months last year, and it's been a really, really volatile year. And this has been happening because of there are two primary patterns that are forming in the All Share Index. And um, if we have to look at it at this point in time, it is kind of moving sideways. So what is quite important is that it's still trading within its bull trend. Now this trend line over here um, is a signal that it's still well within its bull trend. What it has happened to do is then trade sideways within that bull trend. And as of, you know, if you look, if you dated back to about 2014, Oceanix was trading, that's when, you know, the sideways pattern, which started and it then started to the range band between um, or where it was trading at starting to, started to narrow. So at first it was at 61,780, between 61,780 and 46,060. Sam, so, um, it kind of, traded through that for some time. Um, well, previously it would be around there. It then hit a high at 61.73. So it didn't really trade um, at 61.780 in 2014. But this is the range that it's been at, which is quite huge. And then it started to narrow down after it tested its all-time high around um, 2017, 259, 545, and 48.935. So the, the range narrowed, and it narrowed even further last year. And between 59, 545, and 54, 100. Now, this is all because it has formed a symmetrical triangle, which is that slope and that slope. So the index is pretty much caught, uh, or is any kind of, you know, directional movement has been arrested by either this upper slope or the support trend line. Um, of its primary bull trend. So that is why we've experienced a lot of volatility. And this volatility effectively has been happening for the past two years. What is good though is that because the, the range is narrowing, it means the index is bound to break out at some point, which is really great news, but it needs to break out first um, because it has been, excuse me, <coughs> It has been a frustrating two years and, you know, not much has been made, not much money has been made because of the sideways momentum. As you can see here, there'll be, um, this is the monthly chart we're looking at. So you would have down days and you'd make up the money and then you would lose it again and make it up. Really frustrating. But this narrowing trading range is quite a positive, although it does instigate a lot of other volatility, which is um, more than previously, but at least it's now, it's a, it's a sign that it's headed towards um, a breakout. Now, this is the triangle that's been forming, and as you can see, the reason why I've got this as the low slope, because it's tested there a few times and failed, yet it's also held quite firmly on its support trend line. Now, this is, you know, if, if these two slopes continue to um, arrest further directional movement, then we should anticipate um, a lot of other volatility, and the, narrow, the range would then narrow even further and possibly reach the apex, which is here. Now, when it does narrow even further, it means the breakout then becomes quite prominent. 
Okay. One thing I do like about patterns that take years to form is that when they do break out, um, either on the upside or the downside, the directional movement is quite um, is quite prominent. I see a hand up. Let's see. I'm looking at it because oh, it's, there's no. Please, can I just uh, let you know that you are free to write any questions, um, ask any questions rather, and I'll be able to then. Um, let me see. I was just trying to see because I, w I do hope I am audible and everyone can hear me. Right. I just saw a hand up. That's why. Okay. So let's continue. Now, at this point in time, you can see that the all share index is now testing the upper slope, which is a good sign. And I also do like that um, the RSI, which is the three period monthly RSI has maintained its bull trend, which is, these are two positive signs. So in other words, what it's telling us that though there's been sideways momentum, let me just backtrack a little. So when there is, um, a, you know, a market, a commodity or a share, once it's gone through a lot of upside or downside, it has a tendency, in this case, it would be upside. It has a tendency to correct. So it could either correct sideways or it could correct, um, to, by forming a counter trend and then resuming its bull trend again. In this case, it's obviously with the all share index, it's been correcting sideways. Now, these two signs um, with the all share index testing the upper slope and the RSI remaining bullish, it means that there is, though there is sideways momentum, buyers are still there and they seem to be taking an upper hand. Now, let me see. I see. Is it the share or? I'm confused. So this is the all share. Sorry, it is a 203. It, this is the all share index. Um, I'll have to just check what this code. The codes change. I use a couple of um, charting systems, and I think it's so. Just look at the all share. When you open up the chart uh, or the charting system on on our website, it is always defaulted to the all share index. It could either be the 203, but it is um, um, it's the all share index and not the top 40 index. This is the so it's the 203 right there. Okay, there I see it. It's a 203. J203. Apologies for this. Um, it's a J203. I think this is a gold share. This is a gold. Um, I'm not too sure. Cool. Right. Uh, okay, let me just, how do I take this back? Do, do, do. Did I do that? Oh, wow. Okay, there. Okay, cool. So now it's testing the upper slope, which is a good sign. But we also have to bear in mind that it has a tendency to pull back every time it tests the upper slope. So it's not really out of the woods yet. Now, it would only be out of the woods once it trades above 59, for, uh, 545. It's trading at 57. So it's still about 2,000 points up that it has to trade through. So above 59,545, that will confirm a positive breakout ending this entire sideways pattern. Thank goodness. And we can then see it go to its all-time high at 61.780. And um, from there onwards, the target, which is the base of this projected upwards, would be at 17,155. It's a really nice big target. So once it's broken out, then we will see a lot of our shares starting to trade upwards. Okay. The positive sign at this point is that its RSI is maintaining its bull trend. And we really ideally would like a bullish candle. So in February which is next month, um, if there is a white, uh, um, a green candle that forms above this upper slope, that would be excellent news. But a positive breakout, because in technical analysis, we need a level to confirm a breakout. Um, and in this case scenario, it is 59,545. That will confirm a positive breakout, potential gains. And because this pattern has been forming for so long, I think it will just really surge through the 61,780 mark and you know gradually go towards its target at 70,155 okay now the flip side scenario of this is that if it if it encounters um resistance there right i see another question Ooh. oh no that was just a hand up okay if it encounters um if it encounters any resistance, in other words, as you see it has failed there, it could fall back to the lower slope. And we probably then see that zigzag that I mentioned in between these two slopes, um, which then makes the breakout even more prominent. So we'd have to anticipate that. The bearish case scenario of this is that if it traded below 54,100, 
Okay, sorry, let me find my mouse. That will confirm a negative breakout, not only of the triangle, but also of the primary bull trend. Now that would mark the end of this bull trend and the start of a new bear trend. Below that, we could see it go to 48, 935, and below that, go to 46, 060. At 54, 100, you'd want to be short of a lot of your shares. This is when a lot of the CFDs will start um, playing, become, you know, that's when you'd have to at least educate yourself on that because you can make money on the downside with the CFDs. In this case, you'd have to sell a lot of the shares because it would mean sentiment has completely changed and has gone negative. We're still a bit far off um, from that, you know, from the sideways, uh, from that level. We're pretty much in this triangle and we're not out of the woods, I have to explain, but it's a good sign that they are a size bullish and that um, the all share is testing the upper slope. Okay, now this is the monthly chart, so I'm giving you a monthly perspective of what's going to happen. I've broken it down to the weekly chart, so you, um, usually when you look at the shares, you want to look at the monthly chart that will give you what the direction is, and then the weekly chart will zoom in and give you, um, you know, a, a picture, an even zoomed in picture, and then the daily chart will give you other levels or earlier entry levels that you could get in or out. All right, so this being the weekly chart, um, it's pretty similar. And how this, how we, how I always kind of foresaw a positive breakout is because on the weekly chart, um, all share index is forming an inverted head and shoulders, which is known as a bullish um, pattern. Um, it's pretty much, you know, how we are formed with the head and the two shoulders, but it's just upside down. And if it's an inverted one, and it forms within a bull trend, it means it is a bullish continuation pattern. So if there was a bearish pattern, for instance, if it was a the inverse of this, which would be a head and shoulders pattern that was forming within this triangle, then it would, it would have at least given us the perception that a negative breakout was gonna um, be confirmed. Now, how do I see this inverted head and shoulders? This is, I'm just pointing out the range that it's been, the, the, the larger range has been trading between and the inverted head and shoulders is that would be the first shoulder this is the head and these two ranges between 59 545 and 54 100 then make up the final shoulder as you can see so inverted head and shoulders this is the neckline which is then the upper slope of the triangle on the monthly chart now only once the neckline is breached that would then be um, a sign that the bulls are coming in but a positive breakout would ideally be confirmed above the same level, which is on the monthly chart at 59,545. 59, above that, we see it trading through 61,780 to the target, which is um, the base as well as from the neckline to, it's from the top of the head to the neckline and um, projected upwards. So it's at 70,155. So let me just repeat this. If it's an, because it's an inverted head and shoulders, that's how I then figured that there would possibly be a positive breakout of this triangle because you never really know where the breakout will be. You need other um, other signs to kind of, you know, for for directional movement to see if, whether it's going to break out upwards or downwards. Because it's an inverted head and shoulders known as a bullish pattern, that's how I then, you know, I could be wrong, but that's how... I foresee a positive breakout of this triangle. Now, if it had done the opposite, in other words, this flipped upwards, then it would mean a negative breakout would be in the offing. But in this case, it's an inverted positive breakout confirmed above 59, 545, with the target being at 70,155. Okay. Now, the flip side of this, or the alternative scenario, is that as you could see around this 57 mark, it seems to... Um, or oh, it's it it has reached the ceiling there a few times, and it might fail. And if it does, it could then just kind of maintain or extend the sideways movement between these two slopes. Okay, a negative breakout of the symmetrical triangle will be confirmed once this lower slope is breached, and 54100 level is 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 traded through. Below that, we see it go to 48935, which would mark a fail pattern. It would mean this is now failed, and the index is now entering a bear trend with potential losses, um, targeting the 46060 mark. 
this is just the alternative scenario. At this point in time, with the inverted head and shoulders pattern forming, it, it seems as if a positive breakout is more probable than a negative breakout. So this is really good news in, in, in this aspect because I would really love this sideways pattern to come to an end and we could then start reaping the profits of a nice upward movement. Okay. Now this is the daily chart and the daily chart we're just going to be concentrating on the final shoulder. This is the final shoulder. Now as you can see with the final shoulder um, it's on this uptrend and why I like going from monthly to daily is just to see what is a more tighter range and in this case in time you can see that the market is moving sideways still within this tighter range of 58,050 and 56,800. It's currently trading at 57,967 so it's, this is the two you know the two tighter ranges and why these become important is that if the OSHA index starts trading above 58,050, uh, 58, so if we just say at least 58,100, that would mean the neckline, it could then breach that neckline, which could then steer upside towards the 59,545 mark, which then confirms a positive breakout. And above that, we see it go to the all-time high 61, 780. So the tighter range, or well, the range we're going to be looking at throughout the week, um, are these two? Is this is this two? And I actually think um, on I think on every Tuesday we should just kind of if it has broken through this the two uh, either of these levels, and um, on Thursday we'll touch base with it. But it is important that we look at this because that will then tell us what's happening. Because if it does not if it encounters further resistance at 58,050 uh, then it could head back to this 56,800 mark and breaching that um, could see it go to 54,410 which as I said would then just extend this final shoulder of the sideways pattern. These two levels are quite important um, within this week and next week. Okay. Actually, if it trades above this 58,050 tomorrow, that would be a very good sign. Okay. So please keep these two levels. Um, at bay. We're definitely going to look at this on Thursday. The RSI being a leading indicator. Um, what the RSI will do when the, you know, whether it's the index or the, or um, whether it's a share or a commodity, is that if there's a sideways movement, it will drop or it will turn bearish. But it will always pick up if there's buying momentum that's coming in. And how it does that is it will break out of its own bear trend. So in other words, although this is moving sideways with the RSI breaking out of its bear trend, and because the RSI is not even overbought yet, it means that this 58,050 mark will possibly be breached. But this is really good news. Um, I'm anticipating this breakout um, so much because it will really then boost a lot of the, you know, it will boost a lot of upside momentum um, and we could just have a break from the sideways movement. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing for the all share index. All in all, with the signs, signs are looking bullish. It's testing the upper slope, which is the upper slope of a symmetrical triangle on the monthly chart. And it's the neckline of an inverted head and shoulders pattern on the daily and the weekly chart. The daily says if it starts trading above 58,050 and breaches this, um, this neckline, then we could see it head towards 59. And above that, it confirms 59,545. And above that, it confirms a positive breakout. This, if this happens in the first quarter, then it then sets the tone for the second, third, and fourth quarter. Excuse me. Okay. Um, right. Okay, flip side though, because it all seems positive, but we need to know what the negative side is. Any level, any downside below 56,800 would mean sellers have now, it would mean that the indecision is continuing in the long run and that sellers have taken the upper hand and they could then pull it down to 54 or 10. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. A negative breakout of this um, would be confirmed to 53,020. Negative breakout of the entire, like it, this, this upper slope, I mean rather the support trend line of the primary board trend would be breached below 53. Now I see there's a question. 
hold on she yes yes i do recommend yes i do recommend you hold on buying um alton at this point in time um until this all share index breaches it because this already signals there's a lot of indecision but a breakout um would then give us more directional movement so just hold don't be in a hurry to buy anything yet um i was looking at all the shares last week and even the ones i had recommended as a hold although they are in the upward momentum they've all they're also trading sideways so there's a bit of a wait and see game as you can see in the market it just needs to break out and once it does then we can start picking up on shares um okay thanks for that question okay so um, now let's look at the RAND. Now I've gone monthly, this is how I've, I've kind of did, uh, did it with the presentation, it's monthly, weekly and the daily. So with the USDs are, um, I just need to point out that movement going upwards means the RAND is weakening against the dollar and movement going downwards means that it's strengthening. In this case scenario, so as you could see it's moving downwards, it means that the RAND is strengthening. So it was once in a very bearish streak. It broke out, um, it broke out, went very bullish at some point. Now it's gone back into it and then it went, you know, bearish again. But because it seems to be, you know, the slope seems to be curbing any further weakness, we're seeing some RAND strength come through. Now it is kind of moving sideways and the huge range that it's moving in, it's a huge range, remember, because it's a monthly chart, is between 15 Rand 69 and 11 Rand 05. Can you believe it once went all the way to 11 05? That's, in, that's the beginning of 2000, end of 2017. Now, the more narrower range is 50, 15 69 and 13 18. Okay, so this is what we should anticipate within this quarter. Movement between 15 Rand 69, if we had to round it off, let's say 15 70 and 13 Rand 18. This is what I anticipate for the first quarter. Okay. Now, as you can see, it's trading at 14.43. Um, I just slightly, this is this morning it was trading there, and now um, before this webinar it was at 14.41. So there is some strength coming in. Um, and the RSI is also bullish in this case, which means for this year it looks like the USDs are would be more would strengthen rather than than weaken. Now, what's important is it was on a weakening streak around 2018 up to 2000, the, or most of in beginning of 2018 up to the end of 2019 and it found a lot of weakness uh, it even tested that 1569 mark now that's why I had drawn this um, trend line it's now breached that trend line which means it's moved out of bearish mode into bullish mode um, and if it trades which puts the next target at 13 rand 18 if it trades through that we could then see go back to 11.50. Now this is, remember monthly chart, it's more of a long-term view. If it happens to breach the slope, which it has failed to breach um, before, if it happens to breach that slope, then we should then look at it, go towards that 15.69 mark. Above that, it could then go to its all-time low. Remember, it's weakening when it goes up to 17 rand 76. Okay, as you can see at this point, it's traded through this which marks the end of this bearish two-year bearish streak and the start of a new bullish streak. Ideally, there should be another bullish candle that forms there, and if it does, then it means there's a higher probability of the USDs are heading towards 13.18. Okay, now weekly chart is more zoomed in. So this is, this is, this is the year where, um, these are the, you know, throughout 2008 until recently, it has been bearish, but now breaching this means it's now possibly going to enter a bullish territory. Remember, when it goes up, it's weakening. When it goes down, it's strengthening. Okay. Now, because it's going down, it means it is... Okay, let's see what the question is. It's interesting, hence I have a dumb question, so no, don't worry. Um, so we are buying dollar or the rand. Okay, so if it's going down, okay, so 
in this case scenario, because it's a this is the uh, the dollar base, the dollar is the base. It means when it's going down, you are selling the dollar, buying the rand. Okay, so if it's going down, you're selling the dollar, buying the rand. If it's going up, you're buying the dollar, selling the rand. Okay, so let me just let me let me do that again. So because I'm using the USD as a base currency, it would mean the dollar is weak, is is bearish. So if this is falling, the dollar is bearish, meaning the rand is then strengthening. At this case scenario, if you look at this point, it means the dollar is strengthening, meaning the rand has been weakening. Okay, so if you want to trade, you follow the direction as it is, but you 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 follow the direction using the US dollar. You would sell the US dollar and buy the US dollar. Sell on the downside, buy, sell the dollar, but buy the USD when it's going down in this case. And when it's going up like this, you would buy the US dollar and sell the rand. Okay. But in this case scenario, what the charts are saying is that the dollar is now predominantly getting weaker. Okay. Okay, so although there is the sideways movement between um, 1569 and 1385, the, doll, um, the rand has traded out of this trend, which means it's now, you know, it's on strengthening mode. Remember, strengthening. I know you'll probably be looking at this point. Now, why I'm showing this, these charts is, if you remember, I always point out that once there is a breakout, there's a tendency to be a return move, where there'll be a breakout return move. And once um, the, the RAND fails to return back into this area, it will then resume its bull trend. So this, we need to be careful that although there is this upside, it could be merely a return move which is why the levels would then work out. So in other words, if it fails to re reach this and return into this bullish area, which means if it continues to trade below 15 Rand, then you must know that the Rand is in bullish territory. So any level below 15 means the Rand is in bullish territory, and which then increases the chances of Rand breaching a tighter range, which is on the weekly chart, at 1385. Once it breaches 1385, we can then see it go to 1318, which is a level that's on the monthly chart as well. Okay. If at some point in time the rand weakens, remember when it goes up, it's weakening, um, and it starts trading beyond 15 rand 80, then you must know it's back into bearish territory which then could potentially increase the chances of it going to 1570 or 1569. Above 1569, it then could, we could then see it go to that 17 point. Okay. So just to keep it simple for you, any, if the RAND continues to trade below 15 RAND, you must know it's in bullish territory. It means the dollar is weakening and the RAND is strengthening. The rand, so 15 becomes 1580. 1580 becomes your key level. If it trades above 1580, then it's now going back into bearish territory and has potential to even go bearish. Once it trades above 1570, you must know um, sellers could come in quite aggressively and take it up to 17 rand. It is currently trading at 1441, which is below 15, which means it's still in bullish territory. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, okay, so 15 is your level that you need to watch out for. We will um, keep, I will keep you, you know, with our webinars, I will say, I'll mention if it's now headed towards 15. And, you know, this affects a lot of the mining resource stocks. So that's why I'm I'm mentioning the RAND at this point in time. Because what happens is um it will with the conversion that they go through it will um affect what earnings are. Okay. Now when I look at it on the daily chart it gives us an even tighter range. Okay. Remember when it goes up it's weakening when it goes down when when the movement is up it's weakening when the movement is down it's strengthening. 
this point, this is the return move. Now, on the weekly, it says when the RAND goes above 15, it's back into bearish territory. On the daily chart, it says if it gives you an even earlier entry. So 1451 would then be a trigger that, as you can see why I'm putting this as a key level, it has, it was first you know, it's tested that a few times and it has failed to trade through it also a few times. Um, so if it starts trading above 1451, then you should um, then you should anticipate it going to 15. But if it holds or reverses rather below that 1451 mark, it has a high probability to fall back to 1411 and then 1385. Okay. If it trades above 1451, it could go back to, 50, um, to 15. So this means these two levels, 1451 and 1411, are the two levels we need to watch out for on a daily basis. Okay. So above, below, sorry, 1411, the rand is turning bullish. If it's if above um, 1451, it's turning bearish, and it could then head to 15. 15 back to 50, um, to 1570. Above 1570, into bearish territory, we could see it going to 17, okay? However, on the flip side is that if it starts trading below 1411, then, we anticip then I anticipate it to go to 1385, okay? All right, 1520, and then that, 1570. So these are the two earlier levels that we see it going to, you know, the, the, these are the daily levels that you want to watch out for. Right. Okay. Platinum. Monthly charts. Okay. Platinum is um, falling. I mean, it was, sorry, it was in a bear trend on the monthly chart, as you could see. But at this point in time, very interesting development is that it's teetering on this resistance trend line, which is a very good sign. Um, a positive breakout would be confirmed at 1,045. Above that, we're seeing going to 1,297, 1,555, and 1,740. That type of breakout will put more, you know, more bullish impetus on the platinum sh um, stocks. So if the platinum commodity starts, breaks out of its, now this is a bear trend that is, you know, since 2008, it's a very big deal that it's trading on this resistance trend line. And it's a very big deal if it starts trading above 1,045. This then ends this entire bear trend and a new bull trend would start. And this is, you know, platinum commodity has a lot of upside potential, which will push up the platinum stocks a lot, which is why we mentioned platinum stocks being a portfolio, being an, um, being an overweight in our, um, in our portfolio for this year. Okay, so we need to watch out for that level. It's currently trading at 979. Um, okay, this is the price that it's trading at that I looked at before the, um, the webinar. Okay, so it's teetering there, and it has failed a few times, so it's, it's not really out of the woods yet. So I have to mention the bearish point that if it doesn't breach this trend line, it will merely extend the spare trend. And if it does, it could trade back to 755 and then 644. Okay. RSI is forming those rising bottoms, which is a bullish sign. The RSI must also follow suit, by the way. So if it breaches that, if it breaches this level at 1,045, the RSI should also be trading out of this bear trend. And remember, monthly RSI could remain in overbought territory for for months. So that being over, if if it's if it's in overbought territory, never you mind. It's a very bullish sign. Okay, so that's the level we're watching out for, 1,045. That confirms a possible breakout. On the weekly chart, as you could see, you could um, it has breached, but of uh, but as, as if you see that it's breached with this RS it's, when it breached that RSI was overbought, which is the reason why it's pulling back. But it's teetering on that trend line. If it bounces there, then we could see it, um, and it maintains this uptrend. We could see it. Um, trade to 995. So once it trades above 995, you must know that it could then has, it increases the probability of platinum going to 1,045 and confirming that positive breakout. And the first target or resistance level target we see it going to is 1,297. So any level above 995 is a bullish sign. Okay. 
Now, if it fails to breach that, as it has done previously before since 2008, it could fall to the support trend line of its of its bull trend, which has formed within the bigger bear trend. Okay, so this is a recovery within the bear trend. Okay, now if it breaches that, it will just extend um, the bear trend, and that would be signaled below 865. Below that, we see it going to 755, and then to 644. So on the weekly chart, the two key levels we need to watch out for are 995, any level above that would then mark that it's um, platinum is turning bullish and would confirm a positive breakout above 1045. But if it, the opposite happens and it starts trading towards 865, then you should know that it's failed to breach or it has failed to break out of its bear trend and it, it is now extending that bear trend and we can see going to 755. On the daily chart, it's forming the symmetrical triangle. Okay, so daily is now giving us even a tighter range. So once we see it trading above 985, it's currently at 979. Above 985, we then see it increases the chances. It then ends this triangle on a positive note. We see we could then see it go to 995. Above 995, 1045. Okay, I hope you're seeing how the follow through happens. Above 985, it's turning bullish headed towards a weekly level, which is at 9.95. Once it breaches that, a positive breakout will be confirmed at 1,045. On the flip side is that if it trades below 9.45, it would mean this triangle has ended negatively and it would mean um, platinum is still, ex it, you know, is, is back into bearish territory and we can then see it go back to 9.05, which is headed towards this trend line of its bull trend that it that it has it has been forming within the bear trend okay so hopefully this whole bullishness was all in light of it breaking out of this long term bear trend and starting a new bull trend towards all time highs i mean towards prior resistance levels okay two key levels on the daily chart 985 945 any level above 985 means the bulls are in charge and we can then a potential positive breakout would be confirmed at 1045. Any level below 945 means the bears take have taken the upper hand and we could see platinum fall back to 905. Okay. Right. And below that, it would mean it's breached there. We go to 865. Okay. Gold monthly chart. Gold, on the other hand, has surpassed the um, platinum commodity. Still, it you know it hasn't been bearish for a while. Still, be trading within its long-term bull trend. It just happened to have corrected. I'm in a form of a triangle as well. On the so it, it's not, not a triangle. In other words, it did a bit of a counter trend within the bull trend, but has now ended that counter trend on a bullish note. As you can see, it's breached that resistance trend line and it's maintained its long-term uptrend. Gold actually confirmed a positive breakout when it traded traded above 1,395. Now it's teetering at 1,525, um, kind of breached that level today. Once it co continues to trade above this level, then we could see it go to 1,795, and then towards its all-time high at 1,950. Flip side is that if it encounters or reaches a ceiling there, it could fall back to 1,395, and if it breaches this trend line, which is the support trend of its entire long-term bull trend. Um, it could fall to 1,045. It would end, so trading through this, tr this support trend line would end the long-term bull trend and start a new bear trend, which could see gold go to 845. That is the really, really bearish scenario. At this point, the bulls are in charge. And for as long as gold trades, and you see the monthly RSI is not even overbought yet, which means there's ample room for upside. So if, um, once it starts, continues to trade above 1,425, the next level we should watch out for is 1,795, which then says gold should remain as, um, gold shares should remain as, um, you know, overweight shares in your portfolio. Yeah, this is just the flip side scenario. Okay weekly chart let's look at the more tighter ranges so weekly this is this part which is at 1 
1,615. So once it trades above that, which was formed last week, so it formed a bit of a high there, trades above that, um, the two levels we need to watch out for, the ranges are 1,615 and 1,445. These are the two weekly ranges. Now it makes sense why it's coming off at this point because the weekly RSI was overbought. Now if it holds above 5, uh, let me just, 1,525. So if it holds there and trades above 1,615, then we could see that upside to 1,795. Okay. If it trades below 1,445, then we could go to 1,380 and to 1,265. These two levels are important. Bullish continuation would be signaled above 1,615. Um, gold would then be turning bearish if it starts trading above 1,445. Okay. If it trades through that, which is the support trend line of its entire bull trend, then that would be bearish. We could see it going to 1,160. And then to that one, remember that 1,045 1, mark, which confirms a negative breakout of the bull trend. Gold on the daily. Still, it's it's the same in this case scenario. It's still that 1615, and it's gone a bit tighter. So, if gold for the this week holds above 1525, remember that level, then that's a good sign. It increases the chances of heading back to 1615. Above that, we see it going to 1795. Now, if it breaches this level this week. 1525 um, it could then fall to 1445 it would only be bearish turn bearish below 1445 so it would still be within its bull trend even if it does breach that but the only time it would be turning quite bearish is if it trades above 144 um, 1445 so it, um, if it trades below 1000 525 it would just mean the correction is continuing only for it to possibly bounce like that bounce there and then resume okay it would also just pull back a bit of the bull shares i mean the, the gold shares so this is the gold level it's currently trading at it's not too far from there 1543 so watch out for these two levels on the daily chart okay and it makes sense as you can see even our daily chart is extremely overbought so this Downside is warranted. Okay, it doesn't mean any change of sentiment. It just needed to correct from this extremely overbought position. Okay, below 1445, 1318. Okay, I see there's a question. Um, so the RSI setting is on three. Three period. Okay. Right, um, so Brent crude oil being our last one. Brent crude oil is trading in a triangle, so it is pretty much bearish. This is the monthly chart. Brent crude oil has been bearish, but it's also picking up momentum, which may, which means it's trading in a triangle like this. Um, now, a positive breakout of this bear trend would only be confirmed at 86 dollars per barrel. Above that, it will go to 130 and then 146. It's still very far off. It's trading at 64. 60. A negative breakout, which would then mean the bearishness would continue. It would mark the end of this bullish um, counter trend that has been formed within the major bear trend. This bullishness would then end below 50, 30. And then we could see it go to 41, 50, and then 27, 10. Okay. What this is saying is if we had to draw a trend line there that the volatility is likely to continue, but the bulls are in charge. And if the bulls remain in charge, we can then see it go to 86.75. Above 86.75, it would mean the, mark the end of this long-term bear trend dated back to 2009 and the start of a new bull trend that would then just push up Brent crude oil prices. On the weekly chart, the range becomes tighter. Now, as you can see, it's encountering a lot of resistance at $75. And that is your resistance, that is being your support. Once it starts trading above 75, 85, it could then increase the chances of it going to 86, 40, um, 86, 75. 
if it starts trading through at 55.90, it would mean it's traded through this trend line and it's now turning bearish below 55, which increases the chances of brain crude then going to 50.30, confirming a negative breakout of its um, of its bull trend, which is formed in the longer term bear trend, and we can then see it go to 41. Okay, so above 75.85 means it's turning bullish and below 55.90 means it's turning bearish. Now, I didn't do the daily chart here because the levels are pretty much the same. Okay, I will, these levels on all the, um, all the charts I've mentioned will be up on the, um, on our website and I will be touching base on them if there's any level that is breached so we can know the direction of any of these comments. So the reason why I've mentioned all the oil share, the, um, the USDs are as well as all the commodities is because they are all a factor to where the shares are going to be. It looks like platinum is possibly going to breach um, the upper slope and end a bear trend that is dated back to 2008. That's a very good sign, meaning we need to beef up on the platinum shares. Um, gold is already on, pro, pro, confirmed that positive breakout. It seems as if the RAND is going to um, strengthen, which works uh, with some of the shares that are uh, dual listed, which, you know, will it, it doesn't play as much as a role, but it will kind of um, give us directional movement of where the all share, but the important part in this case is that the all share index is now eventually testing the upper slope of a sideways pattern that has been going on for two years. And with its RSI as well as it testing the neckline, breaching that neckline would be glorious for all of us. It would end this two year consolidation and start a new bullish impetus towards its all time high and then towards its target. So it's exciting. I mean, although we started off with very bearish news, um, at the beginning of the year, it seems as if sentiment is overstepping or is like overlooking all the bearishness um, and is, is on positive mode. And if it starts off this way in the first quarter, we'll possibly then enjoy the rest of the year and make good returns. Okay. but. I need to just let you know that Oceanetics is not out of the woods yet. It really needs to breach that trend line and confirm a positive breakout. And once that has happened, um, it would then be good times. All right. So now that you have a broader perspective um, of where, you know, the, the, the levels you need to watch out for, for the first quarter, as well as for the first few days of this, of the week of, you know, this week and potentially next week, we are now going to divulge into what I had been mentioning the when we did our portfolio, what the um, what shares we should be in, and I will be cherry picking. So we have a proper portfolio that we can track, and we can um, all at least be invested in. Okay, now to know what index I'll be chatting about or which shares I'll be chatting about and I I just I'm dabbling between the platinum and the gold shares um, I, they've been trading sideways as you saw on the all share index there's been that sideways trend they've been trading sideways so just hold off on any buying at this point point. Um, let's see what happens this week uh, but we'll at least have levels of what where to buy shares um, between the platinum and the gold shares. I'll look at those. Okay. Um, if you want to know what they'll be, uh, please follow us on Twitter and Facebook. The handle being Share Tracking M. And any questions can be addressed at guru at sharetracking.com. And you can join our lovely Telegram chats um, if you go on to media at sharetracking.com. Well, email them and put your cell phone number. They'll then add you there. Or you can install the app and join the Share Tracking Media. Um, group. Thank you so much. This did take longer than anticipated. I just wanted to really be slow about it, and you know, I, I didn't. I haven't really chatted about commodities and currencies, but I'm going to involve them a lot this year because it will help us with um, our portfolio. I hope this was helpful for you. I do look forward to hearing from you on Thursday, and I really appreciate you logging in. So let's see. There's a question. Thanks, Mishima.
Yes. Don't place any buys yet, guys. The sideways pattern must end as you saw on them or share daily. It's just moving sideways. Although I'm quite excited with what the RSI is doing. It's bringing us some bullish momentum, but we do not take action until levels are breached. Okay, we're all in this together. Cool. Thank you, guys, and have yourself an awesome um, Tuesday. And I look forward to hearing from you on Thursday. Goodbye.